Global supply chains tangled, borders shut. Legitimate trade faces unfamiliar hurdles as this COVID-19 crisis continues, and that means illegitimate trade too, particularly international narcotics trafficking. Well, it isn't traveling on its usual nefarious paths either. Joining us now at a look at that from the provincial capital, we welcome Antonio Nicasso, journalist, organized crime expert, and a lecturer at Queen's University. Antonio, come va? Bene, bene. Really, si Bene? Things are okay? Si sopravvive. Resistiamo. Bravissimo. Bravissimo. Okay, let's get into this. Uh, how do you see the COVID-19 crisis affecting the organized crime landscape these days? Now, moving drugs and contraband, getting migrants across the border, running prostitution, collecting illegal bets without life support events and extorting protection money have become far more complicated since the government implement measures to combat the pandemic. Although we should keep in mind that the successful criminal businesses adapt in the same way as a successful legitimate businesses. So small potatoes are dying, big potatoes are prospering. It's the survival of the fittest. Hmm. Do you think that organized crime actually takes the the, the care to follow physical distancing and other protocols? Well, I don't think so, but uh, we have to uh, put everything in perspective. So getting drugs to the street has been the biggest challenge for many criminal organizations. In, in some ways, the, the global shutdown is forcing them to think of other retail distribution options including online sales and courier deliveries. In some countries, they're using drivers working for essential services to provide door-to-door -door deliveries. Um, unfortunately, uh, despite all the uh, social distance, closure, other measures to limit the spread of COVID-19, uh, unfortunately, the drug trade is alive and well. Uh, there have uh, been many police seizures in March and April, and it showed that tons of drugs are still being moved. Uh, even as land borders have become more supervised. Uh, I'll give you an example in, in, in Italy. In, in March, a, a drangheta boss was arrested while he was uh, trying to hide uh, 357 kilograms of uh, cocaine in the ground of a farm near his home. And that's what they are trying to do. So uh, they, they are putting together a huge amount of, of uh, cocaine to, to cope with the, uh, the demand so that they can steal on with the supply. I, I, I'm going to ask a fast follow-up here, but I assume these legitimate transportation services have no idea that they may be transporting illegal or illicit products, right? Of, of course not. They use uh, containers uh, uh, to, that they use to ship uh, uh, um, uh, food, uh, fruits, vegetables. Uh, and, and of course, they are changing routes. For example, in, in Europe, uh, there was a decrease of by 80% of the seizures in Italy because uh, Every shipment goes directly to Rotterdam in, in, in the Netherlands and in Al, Al Jazeera or Barcelona in, in, in Spain before uh, they used uh, uh, several ports in Italy. The same is with, uh, with North America, with Canada, with the United States. Hmm. Has there been a spike in cyber crimes as well? Yes, and uh, again, while the pandemic proved to be bad for some organized crime traditional business, such as extortion, uh, you can extort money if all the restaurants uh, uh, are shut down, or prostitution, or illegal bettings, because there is no sport live event. But they, uh, they, uh, they also, this pandemic has uh, offered new opportunities. For example, you mentioned uh, uh, um, the cyber crimes. Criminal hackers are taking advantage of the rapid rise in online activity from individual companies and government. We spend more time in front of our computers, and that's a fact. You know? According to the United Nations Security Council, 
cybercrime is on the rise with a 600 increase in malicious emails during the current uh, crisis. What they do, in some cases, they have impersonated the reliable organizations, such as the World Health Organization. So, uh, we can provide an interactive map uh, to, to monitor the spread of the virus, and instead they spread the malware to, to gather personal information. For example, other email phishing scams promise the government stimulus money and so you can i i i read the report about the fake coronavirus test uh, treatment um, in some case in canada uh, fraudsters that are pretending to be employees of the public safety are calling people asking for personal information such as a social insurance number password the banking details and in some cases they we were able to mask their phone numbers to appear like uh, the one of a public safety Canada. Uh, hmm. Another business, uh, it, it's the, the online gaming, and that's it on, on, on the race. Uh, uh, and again, uh, this is an alternative form of the um, gaming uh, houses uh, controlled by, by, by criminals. Antonio, what have the current conditions done to, for example, uh, the competition among cartels for their piece of the pie? Unfortunately, uh, uh, they, they, as I told you before, they are adapting to the COVID-19 emergency better than any other legitimate uh, companies. Um, the industry, which is a, just a for the cocaine, it's an industry that alone produces close to 2,000 metric tons a year and make tens of billions of dollars. So the industry has benefited from vast stores of drug warehouses and its wide variety of smuggling methods it has become harder to get drugs to more traditional ports of entry. Traffickers are switching to parallel routes and loading drugs on the submarines, speed boats, or offloading on beaches in Central America. Did you say submarines? Yes, submarines. Uh, they they used uh, they used to use submarines to, to ship the, uh, cocaine from, uh, for example, Colombia to Panama. In some cases, to cross the Atlantic uh, towards uh, the uh, Central Africa. And, and I was in, in Colombia uh, on, a, on, a, on a trip to a police, uh, uh, to a military police, and they showed some submarines that they were able to, to seize during a police operation. And sometimes they are submarine with the driver, with the pilot, and sometimes it's a submarine without a pilot. They launch on the the ocean, it, 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 it practically, it, it, it's like uh, uh, um, they, they will lose the submarine, but the, the submarine will uh, uh, send uh, tons of cocaine in international water when, uh, uh, with the other way, some uh, uh, um, traffickers will collect and, uh, and, 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 and then distribute the, 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 the cocaine shipped through uh, submarines. Now, we know from police officers that we've talked to on this program that some crimes are way up, unfortunately, domestic abuse and that kind of thing. Uh, a lot of crimes are way down. There's a lot less murder. There's a lot less mayhem, a lot less assaults, obviously, um, break and enters, that kind of thing. What impact do you, as you look at the broader criminal picture, what are you seeing in terms of the change in criminal activity thanks to the pandemic? As I told you before, I think they are capable to adapt. And so they are willing to lose money from traditional businesses, such as extortion, prostitution, illegal bettings. But they are making tons of money uh, through um, uh, drug trafficking. Uh, for example, there was an increase in, in, the, in the price. The illicit drug prices uh, have gone up. In, in many countries, they have increased up to 30%, similar to the increase of price for human smuggling. The cost of coyotes, which is another way to referring to human smuggling, has increased substantially in the last 
to uh, to man's. Uh, you can see there, for example, that uh, in New York, uh, the, the, the the street price of marijuana has uh, risen 55 percent since March. Cocaine has increased 12 percent. Aaron is now seven percent more expensive. Same issue in 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 Canada. Same issue in in Europe. Six months ago in Europe, the price. Uh, of a kilogram of cocaine was 25, 27. Now it's 35, 37. So practically, they try to adapt. They try to to cope with the supply chain. Hmm. I've heard this expression before: financial doping. What is financial doping? But um, financial doping. Um, I use that word because I see that as soon as the crisis unfolds, the organized crime. Um, take advantage uh, and, and practically as they did before, they would transform a, a crisis into opportunity. So if it, you're thinking what happened in the 2008, the financial crisis of 2008, the drug money at that time was the only liquid investment capital available to some banks on the brink of a collapse. And that's what the what the, what the will happen in, in, in the near futures, in the sense that the, uh, some criminal organization may forage loan the sharks or uh, directly lend the usury money to entrepreneurs who could have a liquidity problem within a few days. They may also offer credit or guarantee bank credit to business people on the verge of a bankruptcy. They may buy, uh, take over uh, uh, companies, uh, failing companies. That's what they practically uh, uh, used to do. And if you're thinking uh, there are some sectors at risk, in, for example, uh, healthcare infrastructure, agri-food sector, restaurant, tracking, logistic, warehousing, uh, those are particularly at risk of infiltration. But they learn that many people are spending time in front of a computer. So other possible sector of investment are the e-commerce, food distribution, catering business. Uh, I remember a mobster, a conversation between two mobsters was intercepted in Italy a few years ago. And one said to the others that they will be less and less need for people who know to click a gun, but more people capable of clicking a keyboard. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. We've heard that before. Yes. How about Public Safety Canada? How much luck do you think they're having these days uh, trying to stay on top of all this? But I believe that the Public Safety Canada is doing a great job, as well as the government with the, the stimulus program. My concern is not with the law enforcement agencies, uh, um, but with uh, lawmakers. Canada is a country of opportunity. Once I call Canada a welcome wagon for organized crime, because any significant criminal organization have a branch here. So uh, we had the example of uh, Vancouver, where organized crime washing the drug sales in British Columbia casinos in a high-priced retail estate and transfer London funds back to Chinese factories to repeat the deadly trade cycle. So I hope that we learn the lesson. I hope that the federal government will enforce the new legislation to close real estate ownership loopholes and crack down on property speculation, tax evasion, money laundering. Uh, you have to consider that according to some estimation, Canada loses more than $8 billion a year from tax even uh, schemes alone. Uh, so I think uh, what we have to keep in mind he, is that uh, organized crime or mafia and mafia type criminal organization are different than street gangs and other criminal groups because they are able and capable to counting on a network of relationships, such as professional of any kind, including politicians. So while violence is their backbone, uh, power and connection to people in power are their lifeblood. Hmm. Antonio, we've got about a minute left, long enough for me to ask you this one last question. What do you think it is about the character or the DNA of organized crime that makes them so exquisitely good at adapting to new circumstances that come along, including, for goodness sakes, a global pandemic? 
So it's uh, the ability to adapt to any circumstances and the ability, as I told you before, to count on a network of relationship. Uh, we sometimes focus, many times focus on the, the criminals element, but, but, but we should go after the crimes of the powerful uh, if we want to defeat organized crime, because uh, that those people are provide the know-how for criminals to survive. There is a song written and played by Leonard Cohen. Everybody knows. I think everybody knows in Canada <laughs> that you won't deal only with criminals, but the world connected the criminals. So yeah, I believe we have to start from this concept, the concept of everybody knows and disrupt the connection between the underworld and the upper world. Well, I'll tell you, everybody who watches this program, everybody knows that you are the best at this stuff. You really explain it to us very well. Antonio Nicasso, ci vediamo alla prossima volta, and please stay safe out there, okay? Grazie. You, you too. Bye. Ciao. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.